Hello everyone, welcome back to my Advanced Words by Web Road to 1K series. My name is Timid Falconite, and today we will be playing this tier 3 fog match on the map Splintered versus user Blue Leader, who was around 900 ish rating at the time of this battle. So, this should be a upper beginner type match, um, but it should be a fun one. So let's go ahead and just get into the map. Uh, there's a 26 property capture limit on this map, which is um, this one right here. As you can see, it, it's fairly dense with the properties. Um, it's got around 40 properties total. So yeah, that's this. Um, up, up on the top, you'll see player one. You've got this um, production area over here, and then this production area over here. This base here is sort of a, I guess, a midpoint production area that can funnel um, to support this one. And then this base over here, this base over here is going to be your main strong side uh, base. So. It's going to be able to funnel units, uh, sh shoot them basically out of here, t down this road towards this comm tower here. And the comm towers in this map are very, very contestable, they're very exposed. As are VHQs to, ex to an extent, to it's to a little bit lesser extent. Um, but for, it's actually to a very much lesser extent because the base is closer to, um, it's much closer to the HQ than it is to the comm tower. And geographically, it doesn't actually look all too far away. But when you take into account um, the reinforcement time from each um, side of bases, then it gets a bit more of as to knowing how um, how the, these comm towers are so contestable. So if you go from this base, you I guess you make it build a tank here. You got one, two, three, four, five, six. It's not in range of the comm tower. Go from this, so it's two turns from this comm tower, no matter what. You go from this base, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then it'll be able to contest stuff in this comm tower. So either way, um, from these two bases, which will be basically most of the early game. Um, infantry, you'll be able to contest this comm tower super, super easily. Uh, the other thing is that you have this airport here, which is actually exactly six tiles away from the comm tower. So you can use it to kick, kick stuff off of the comm tower, but you can't use it to block um, from one turn after building stuff here. And that makes it a bit, <laughs> a bit interesting because it just makes this area super, super heavily contestable, this one as well. And then you got these areas here. These back areas are basically just going to be um, grabbed up by their respective players. This area in the middle here is going to be contested a little bit. Um, you can do some sort of, in, some a little bit of indirect type stuff in these areas here due to these, due to these bridges. In these mountains, you can cut stuff off fairly easily. Uh, but <clears throat> yeah, that's more or less the general gist of the map. Um, if you go to the map analysis, you'll see that of the tier three COs for fog, um, the two that are have the highest win rates are just the global damage global damage COs. So that's Kindle and Drake. <clears throat> Which, I think it's like for most games. I mean, most maps, it's sort of like that. You got the go If you, basically, if you pick the global damage CO, you can just click a button and um, your opponent's army disappears, if a fraction of it disappears. So that's an easy way to make this work. I think Kindle's actually pretty, pretty good on this map just because of how dense it is. So there are a lot of areas where she can pop artillery on properties and she can um, use them to, to contest other properties, but that's not really what matters in this match actually. 
because uh, <laughs> neither me nor my opponent actually went for Ivory Kindle or Drake. My opponent went for him. And in this map, because it's so small, I think that's actually not too bad of an idea. Because um, let's click on him. Andy here gets um, extra movement on his superpower, so he'll be able to do pretty good um, pushes on this map. He would actually be able to start contesting when, when you're getting into uh, contesting this area. Plus one movement actually starts to matter a lot, just due to how um, close yet far these production centers are from your, I guess, weak side comm tower. Um, so that matters a lot. Um, but it doesn't really matter to Lash. Lash is, Lash would never, I don't think you would ever want to pick on this map. Uh, like, look at it. There's basically no terrain other than properties, which you, if you, handles better at anyways. Um, Rachel, you could pick her, because she, had, covering fire is always pretty good. Um, but, and she's all, all around pretty good. There's enough bases that her repair, her extra HP repair could be pretty good because you'll be able to use forward bases to heal up faster and and you'll be able to contest these areas a lot easier. Uh, if you have, well, a little bit easier if you have um, extra point of health repaired. And then uh, Sonya, who I picked, is nice just because there aren't that many mountains around. Well, there are a couple mountains around, so, eh. But um, we can't really show you everything, even if you have something, even if you have like an infantry or a mech or something on all of the mountains, you still need um, recons and stuff. With Sonya, it, it becomes a little bit less that you need it so much. So, and because of how small the map is, um, Sonya is basically going to be able to see the whole map with just a couple tanks if she really needs to. So uh, she can slack a little bit on the, a little bit more on the recons than you normally would. Um, but yeah, I picked, <laughs> I picked Sonya because it's tier three fog. I agree with the Andy pick actually. The Andy pick's pretty good on this map. Um, but Lobo damage is always really nice and easy to use as well. So. I think that's good for the preamble. Uh, well, actually, I think I want to talk about the HQs. So the HQs are sort of exposed, but they're a lot less exposed than the comm towers. And the reason for that is they're only actually six tiles away. No, they're actually five. Five tiles away from the, their bases. Which means if you need to, you can put a medium tank onto, the, onto the, your HQ to stop Basically, just stop any attempts to HQ, HQ cap basically within a turn if you can push through here. So, if someone were to try to do an HQ cap, um, it would be really important to clog up this artery right here, basically, with units so that they can't reinforce. Um, another reason why the five thing, the five uh, space distance is important is because it's within range of like rockets and stuff, and then you got the um, Battlecopters coming out of the airport too, which are a little bit less, less relevant, but um, yeah, they're not really too too relevant. With a plus one move, they're maybe a little bit more relevant. Um, I would say bombers are actually a little bit more relevant with a plus one move from Andy, but and whatever. Well, well, I think that's enough preamble for now, so let's go ahead and get into the actual uh, match replay. So, um, as you can see, just building infantry to start, pretty standard. Uh, both of us go basically um, pretty standard uh, capture chains going for the um, properties that are within range of um our hqs first and then going on towards other stuff that's nearby basically um so yeah um the thing that's interesting about this 
map is that um, you always want to go for the second base from this HQ because it's only three turns, while this one, it's um, I think it's four turns to get there. So it'll be an extra turn if you basically choose the wrong place to build from. I mean march from, not build from. Um, but I go for the early recon here because the comm tower is actually in play on this map a little bit. Going and I'm also going pushing for the comm tower here early uh, because of that same reason. It's to make sure that I can secure this so that hopefully I'll be able to hold on to it for the rest of the match. Um, and if not, I'll be able to um, get as much use of that out of it as I can. But um, the main reason why I'm doing it like this is to make sure that he doesn't send out a cheeky recon to make sure to kick me off of this too early. Um, like I'm doing over here on the side. So I see that his... Um, he hasn't captured his comm tower yet, so I can move into the <clears throat> forest here because I'll be able to contest this if I need to, if I want to. Um, or if he moves in too far, I can just back out if I want to. And I also build a tank to fall up here so that potentially I can get a capture chain started over here. Um, let's see. So moving in on all of this stuff. I go for this recon here, mainly just so I can get vision in the center. Um, maybe it's a bit premature, but honestly, I would just like the vision a lot. So being able to, s and with these two recons, I'm basically able to see the entire um, front of this map. This map is small enough um, that you can see a lot of what's going on, just a, a couple of recons. And I think that's how it is for most maps. You only really want to get like one, two, two to three recons, depending on the size. And what the leader is doing here is he's going for early artillery. Um, and like I said, I think I said this earlier, but the center here is a pretty good spot to, um, push artillery into because you have these nice little shell points and you have these mountains as well. So that'll be a nice area for him to push into. So I'm, I'm making games over here. I think the dividing line is basically right here. So anything to the north of that should more or less be my property. Anything to the south of that should more or less be his, but there are a couple of exceptions, I think. Um, based, just based on base placement alone. I think this one, no. Well, I think I like that as a rule of thumb, but you have this very nice clear dividing line in the center that um, can give you a basic idea of where everyone should be. Um, so as you can see, he's already got three artillery out, <laughs> um, but just the one tank. So that's, I think that four artillery. That's kind of a mistake on his part, although, Honestly, over here, it's not too bad of an idea because you have these nice little choke point areas over here that you can just um, move stuff around it. Although, what he should have done was move on to this bridge here and then just guard with his infantry. Um, because, well, even I do have, to be fair, um. I, if he had gone in here, I might have been able to start contesting a bit if I really wanted to be aggressive. But he should have been, he should have moved up a little bit so that he'd be able to fire onto my reef on next turn. Because I can see all of this down here. Um, and he's also got the artillery here. So I guess he, he's trying to make a push up this way. The bulk of his forces in the artillery. Building a pretty good infantry artillery wall here. Um, but without tanks as backup, it might be an issue for him. I go ahead and just cap the lab, because why not? It's an extra bit of vision. Um, and I'm able to see here as well. It's, 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 it's not only does the lab give me vision, uh, but I can also it's also scouting a little bit. On a pretty defensive tile as well. So capping labs is so, Sonya is pretty... It's not like super stupid to do that and as you can see here this is the main this is actually the main reason i like playing sonya and fog 
is because your opponent can't see your health values and you can dart in and out of the fog with your units. So you can do a bit more mind gamesy type stuff with her. Um, so I think she's a, a bit above average if you know what you're doing here. She's, you can't really just click a button and win with her, like the global damage she does. But yeah, he goes for an anti-air on turn 9, which is... Um, I think it's maybe a little bit early, but I I do have the, the airport here um, capped, so we'll see if it's a bit early. The map is small enough that you can wait on the entire um, if you want to, but as you can see, I just managed to push in here, take some shots here. Honestly, this is a bit aggressive. Um, I didn't know going into this that there were going to be so many artillery here. Um, but, well, I kind of did, honestly. Let's be real. I did know. I don't think I should have gone in here. I should have... What I should have done was just fall back a little bit with the infantry, make a bit of a line here, start reinforcing over here, and you have, like, a, have like at least a tank or something. Um, well, actually, a battlecopter. A battlecopter would be perfect here. Because I could draw them in towards the HQ and then start punishing the artillery pretty well with the battlecopters. Because really, really, you build battlecopters to do to fight against a couple things, which is this artillery ball here and tanks. So those are the two main things you can counter with them, and then <clears throat> mechs as well. Mechs are also something that you want to build battlecopters for. But um, as you can see here, I'm able to. Um, he's actually pushing it down here, which is smart with him. So he's got his um, artillery here very well secured. Um, so I just fall back because I knew I was able to see the artillery here. He's gonna, I'm just going to let him go ahead and push in here and take that. So you can do that. And then I'm also just letting him contest it like this. So if I want to contest it, I can still actually throw my units at the comm tower but they'll be out of range um, of your artillery, is a thing. So if he wants to um, guard his um, comm tower a bit more, he's gonna have to move in with the artillery. So that's basically what I'm trying to do. So make, make, it, make his artillery, move his artillery up so that it's a bit more exposed and I can push in a bit more effectively against it. Um, as you can see here, he's countering my push very effectively over here. I should have not gone in so aggressively, but oh well. Um, he's pushing in here to uh, counter this, honestly. <laughs> funny thing about this, <laughs> this is actually a funny uh, city, because I think I go for this a lot, but I don't actually end up contesting at all. Um, I agree with the infantry push here, because this way he's making sure I don't push into this. At least in theory. <laughs> um, so I go ahead and just push in with my units here, start capping the HQ, and then I just go ahead and move in with as many units as I can. I move in my artillery as far in as I can, I think, right? Yeah. Um, maybe I could have moved that one in a bit further, but I think I wanted it here so that it was a, I think it's mainly so that it was a little bit less exposed. That was my reasoning on that. Um, I move in with my infantry tree here to mm -hmm. distract. Um, hold on. Alright, had a call there, but going back into it, I've got this little formation here and I'm pushing pretty hard into the HQ actually now that he's moved over, moved all of his units this way. Um, and he's got this push going over here, so I know he's got a good amount of funds tied up here as well. Uh, which makes me pretty confident. And maybe once I saw these free artillery here, I was pretty confident that I could just push in here. And he wouldn't have enough resources to um, really counter me. Uh, because he's got so much tied up over here. So I go for the medium tank. Um, because I see his down here. Uh, just to make to try and counter that and also miss the light units over here as well. Um, he moves in like that uh, to 
be able to stop himself from losing mainly. Um, it was only he was actually only able to do a little bit of damage there. Um, but of course he didn't see the HP on that, so that's why I didn't like that. Again, same thing here. He cleans up um, my units over here fairly effectively. And then uh, he moves us to there. I'm not exactly sure why he doesn't like that exactly, but he does. Um, if I were him, uh, well, let's see if he actually sees... Uh, he sees a good chunk of this, but honestly, since he sees so much stuff over here, I, if I were him, I would be, start pushing my artillery this way to maybe counter the HQ cap, but I guess he didn't understand how how um, much I had in this area. So I move in with my tanks, I uh, go ahead and join cap here. And then I move in like that, actually, to guard um, my infantry. And the reason I do it like this is mainly just because if I do it like this, it's not gonna be able to stop me from capping. At least from, um, with the battle copter. And so long as I leave um, everything open like that, this should be fine. Um, I don't think he's gonna be able to push in. Yeah, he's not able to push in against my tank here, for my tank here. So I've I've actually secured every angle of, of attack here he has, except for obviously the indirect one and the one over the river, which he can uh, contest with his battle copter here. So I mean, I basically I make this little um, uh, tank wall actually to guard against his medium tank because he's not going to be able to one shot either of these tanks because he's he doesn't have enough firepower. Um, even with the with the single palm tower, he does not enough. So I move my I move my as many of my units in over here as I can. I basically just have the recon here to guard the HQ at this point because he has so much um, infantry and also the artillery a little bit over here. Um, build more stuff to push with, and I actually get my another recon here just to, so that I can get more vision over here, see what's going on. And then he makes the, the biggest mistake of this match, and that's um, going to come up in a second here, which is that. He should not have done that. And the reason he should not have done that at all is because now I'm going to be able to, now I win because he's not gonna be able to push in against the tanks properly. And yeah, that's basically, as soon as he moved that rockets off the base here, he was done. He was screwed. Um, so if we get him turn, I just, let's go ahead and cap. Um, yep, cap and he's done. And it did, his battle copter only did four damage here, but I think it was theoretically able to do up to five, which still wouldn't have been enough to um, finish off the capture there. And I forget, is he actually able to see? He should be able to see that I have five remaining here. He should have been able to see me uh, join cap here. Yeah, I joined capped when he um, when he had these tanks in range, so definitely should not have gone for that. Now, here's the other thing that's a bit interesting for his situation here is he's got um, enough money that he and he really wants to start pumping units out of this base here. The only issue is that. Um, he can't, really. Um, so what he really needed to do was he, he moved in the artillery properly to threaten that. And it's he's consolidating down here, which is good as well. But he, could, he should not have done that at all. 
Um, and then past that, he only spent like 9k. He definitely should have built another air unit here if he's gonna. Like, what I think, I think the way out for him would have been to build a, maybe a bomber, if he had the money, but definitely another battlecopter here, just fire there. Well, he, he just needed to fire with his, um, um, what's, what's it even called, with his uh, rockets here, because then, if this would be a much different situation, I would be... I would be, basically I'd be off of the um, HQ because 60, well, it's, it's the difference here between a 62% and a 50%, it's, it's, it's literally one HP of difference, but it made all of the difference though. So that's, that's an important thing to note when playing against Sonya is you need to make sure that you're keeping as much track of her HP as you can. Um, and just know that if she has a lot of, e of infantry in the area, if she's, if she's going for an aggressive HQ cap like that, it, she can just, you can just, it can just be over like that. Like that. <laughs> Without much um, going on. I think actually... Um, he actually may have been able to do its... Yeah, so what he should have done actually is, um, with the power, he does... Actually, no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I was gonna say, maybe he, had, he would have had enough damage um, with the power active in order to um, do... Uh, six damage to my infantry, maybe, but it's just out of range on the luck thing. And you never want to do to, um, you never want to put, to wave a victory of a match um, on like one luck of a lucky hand. Uh, of course, it was guaranteed that he wouldn't be able to break through here and stop a cap, so. Yeah, that, that move was all that mattered. And the indirect thing here is also a big thing of what mattered here. Um, I do think the Rockets is the correct play here, though. Uh, he just should have, should have used them, <laughs> rather than moving with them. But all in all, it's an interesting little HQ cap, I think. Um, but I think if he knocks off this infantry here, I basically have to retreat. Um, because I don't have enough units here and I only need to retreat like back here, maybe. Uh, but I've got this property secured. I can contest this property for sure. Uh, I just need to wait for my medium tank to come in. Um, and then just build up and then push some more. Probably take the, go for the comm tower next is what I would probably do. If I didn't have this HQ cap secured. Um, but I think that's about it for this week's episode, actually. So that one, that was a really fast one. Next week's will not be fast at all. <laughs> um, again, uh, upper beginner type match versus Lash in Witchcraft Trials. So this map, it's got a good amount of open space. It's got a good amount of um, uh, terrain as well. So. But I don't think Flash is the correct answer at all here. I don't think I ever want to bring Lash here. I would never bring Lash here, but you'll see. Um, it's also got this cool little area up in the middle where you have um, these mountains and a bunch of vision stuff going on. And Sony is actually really good on this map as well. So um, two Sonya matches in a row. <laughs> two tier free fog, aka Sonya matches in a row. So you'll, you'll be able to see more of my Sonya play next week um other than that though i think that's about it for today so uh like subscribe to all the dumb youtube stuff and tune in next week for this match um other than that i'm i'm done for the week so bye all